European migrant crisis reactions European Union After the migrant shipwreck on April 19, 2015, Italy's Premier Matteo Renzi spoke by telephone to French President François Hollande and to Maltese Prime Minister Joseph Muscat. They agreed to call for an emergency meeting of European interior ministers to address the problem of migrant deaths. Renzi condemned human trafficking as a new slave trade while Prime Minister Muscat said 19th of April shipwreck was the biggest human tragedy of the last few years. Hollande described people traffickers as terrorists who put migrant lives at risk. The German government's representative for migration, refugees and integration, Aidan Ozogs, said that with more migrants likely to arrive as the weather turned warmer, emergency rescue missions should be restored. It was an illusion to think that cutting off Mare Nostrum would prevent people from attempting this dangerous voyage across the Mediterranean, she said. Federica Mogherini, high representative of the EU for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, called for collective EU action ahead of a meeting in Luxembourg on Monday 20th of April. In a press conference, Renzi confirmed that Italy had called an extraordinary European Council meeting as soon as possible to discuss the tragedy, various European leaders agreed with this idea. Cameron tweeted on 20th of April that he supported Renzi's call for an emergency meeting of EU leaders to find a comprehensive solution to the migrant crisis in the Mediterranean. He later confirmed that he would attend an emergency summit of European leaders on Thursday. On April 20, 2015, the European Commission proposed a 10-point plan to tackle the crisis. Reinforce the joint operations in the Mediterranean, namely Triton and Poseidon, by increasing the financial resources and the number of assets. We will also extend their operational area, allowing us to intervene further, within the mandate of Frontex. A systematic effort to capture and destroy vessels used by the smugglers. The positive results obtained with the Atalanta operation should inspire us to similar operations against smugglers in the Mediterranean. Europol, Frontex, ESO and Eurojust will meet regularly and work closely to gather information on smugglers' modus operandi, to trace their funds and to assist in their investigation. ESO to deploy teams in Italy and Greece for joint processing of asylum applications. Member states to ensure fingerprinting of all migrants. Consider options for an emergency relocation mechanism. A EU-wide voluntary pilot project on resettlement, offering a number of places to persons in need of protection. Establish a new return program for rapid return of irregular migrants coordinated by Frontex from frontline member states. Engagement with countries surrounding Libya through a joint effort between the Commission and the EAS, initiatives in Niger have to be stepped up. Deploy Immigration Liaison Officers, ILO, in key third countries, to gather intelligence on migratory flows and strengthen the role of the EU delegations. A year after the 10 point plan was introduced, the European Commission also began the process for reforming the common European asylum system. Started in 1999, the European Commission began devising a plan to create a unified asylum system for those seeking refuge and asylum. Named the Common European Asylum System, CEAS, the system sought to address three key problems which consisted of asylum shopping, differing outcomes in different EU member states for those seeking asylum, and differing social benefits in different EU member states for those seeking asylum. In an attempt to address these issues, the European Commission created five components that sought to fulfill minimum standards for asylum. The Asylum Procedures Directive The Receptions Conditions Directive The Qualification Directive The Dublin Regulation The Eurodac Regulation completed in 2005 the common European asylum system sought to protect the rights of those seeking asylum. The system proved to create differing implementation across EU states, building an uneven system of 28 asylum systems across individual states. Due to this divided asylum system and problems with the Dublin system, the European Commission proposed a reform of the common European asylum system in 2016. Starting on April 6, 2016, the European Commission began the process of reforming the common European asylum system and creating measures for safe and managed paths for legal migration to Europe. 
First Vice President Franz Timmermans stated that, We need a sustainable system for the future, based on common rules, a fairer sharing of responsibility, and safe legal channels for those who need protection to get it in the EU. The European Commission identified five areas that needed improvement in order to successfully reform the common European asylum system. Establishing a sustainable and fair system for determining the member state responsible for asylum seekers. Achieving greater convergence and reducing asylum shopping. Preventing secondary movements within the EU. A new mandate for the EU's asylum agency, to allow the Asylum Support Office to have a role in implementing policy and have an operational position. Reinforcing the Eurodac system, to support the implementation of the Reform Dublin system. To create safer and more efficient legal migration routes, the European Commission sought to meet the following five goals. A structured resettlement system. A reform of the EU Blue Card Directive, to enhance the admission process and increase rights. Measures to attract and support innovative entrepreneurs, to increase economic growth and create jobs. A refit evaluation of the existing legal migration rules, to simplify the current rules for living, working, or studying in the EU. Pursuing close cooperation with third countries, to create a more successful management of migrants. On July 13, 2016, the European Commission introduced the proposals to complete the reform of the common European asylum system. The reform sought to create a just policy for asylum seekers, while providing a new system that was simple and shortened. Ultimately, the reform proposal attempted to create a system that could handle normal and impacted times of migratory pressure. The European Commission's outline for reform proposed the following. Replace the Asylum Procedures Directive with a regulation, which sought to create a fair and efficient common EU procedure. Simplify, clarify, and shorten asylum procedures. Ensure common guarantees for asylum seekers. Ensure stricter rules to combat abuse. Harmonize rules on safe countries. Replace the existing qualification directive with a new regulation, which sought to unify protection standards and rights. Create greater convergence of recognition rates and forms or protection. Implement firmer rules sanctioning secondary movements. Provide protection only for as long as needed. Strengthen integration incentives. Reform the Reception Conditions Directive, which would allow for common reception standards for asylum seekers. Administer standards and indicators on reception conditions developed by the European Asylum Support Office and update contingency plans. Ensure asylum seekers remain available and discourage them from absconding. Clarify that reception conditions will only be provided in the member state responsible. Grant earlier access to the labor market. Implement common reinforced guarantees. Border Patrol Operations The Guardian and Reuters noted that doubling the size of Operation Trident would still leave the mission with fewer resources than the previous Italian-run rescue option, Operation Mare Nostrum, whose budget was more than three times as large had four times the number of aircraft and had a wider mandate to conduct search and rescue operations across the Mediterranean Sea. On April 23, 2015, a five-hour emergency summit was held and EU heads of state agreed to triple the budget of Operation Trident to €120 million Euros for 2015 to 2016. EU leaders claimed that this would allow for the same operational capabilities as Operation Mare Nostrum had had in 2013 to 2014. As part of the agreement the United Kingdom agreed to send HMS Bulwark, two naval patrol boats and three helicopters to join the operation. On May 5, 2015 it was announced by the Irish Minister of Defence Simon Coveney that the La Enya would also take part in the response to the crisis. Amnesty International immediately criticised the EU response as a face-saving not a life-saving operation and said that failure to extend Trident's operational area will fatally undermine today's commitment. On May 18, 2015, 
the European Union decided to launch a new operation based in Rome, called EU Nave Formed, under the command of the Italian Admiral Enrico Credentino, to undertake systematic efforts to identify, capture and dispose of vessels used by migrant smugglers. The first phase of the operation, launched on 22 June, involved naval surveillance to detect smugglers' boats and monitor smuggling patterns from Libya towards Italy and Malta. The second phase, called Operation Sophia, started in October, and was aimed at disrupting the smugglers' journeys by boarding, searching, seizing and diverting migrant vessels in international waters. The operation uses six EU warships. As of April 2016, more than 13,000 migrants were rescued from the sea and 68 alleged smugglers were arrested in the course of the operation. The EU seeks to increase the scope of EU nave format so that a third phase of the operation would include patrols inside Libyan waters in order to capture and dispose of vessels used by smugglers. Land operations on Libya to destroy vessels used by smugglers had been proposed, but commentators note that such an operation would need a UN or Libyan permit. Relocation and Resettlement of Asylum Seekers the escalation in April 2015 of shipwrecks of migrant boats in the Mediterranean led European Union leaders to reconsider their policies on border control and processing of migrants. On 20th of April the European Commission proposed a 10-point plan that included the European Asylum Support Office deploying teams in Italy and Greece for joint processing of asylum applications. Also in April 2015 German Chancellor Angela Merkel proposed a new system of quotas to distribute non-EU asylum seekers around the EU member states. In September 2015, as thousands of migrants started to move from Budapest to Vienna, Germany, Italy and France demanded asylum seekers be shared more evenly between EU states. Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker proposed to distribute 160,000 asylum seekers among EU states under a new migrant quota system to be set out. Jean Asselborn, the Luxembourg foreign minister, called for the establishment of a European refugee agency which would have the power to investigate whether every EU member state is applying the same standards for granting asylum to migrants. Viktor Orban, the Prime Minister of Hungary, criticized the European Commission warning that tens of millions of migrants could come to Europe. Asselborn declared to be ashamed of Orban. German Foreign Minister Frank-Walter Steinmeier said that EU members reluctant to accept compulsory migrant quotas may have to be outvoted, if there is no other way then we should seriously consider to use the instrument of a qualified majority. Leaders of the Visegrad Group, Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland, Slovakia, declared in a September meeting in Prague that they will not accept any compulsory long-term quota on redistribution of immigrants. Czech government's secretary for European affairs Tomas Pro Uza commented that if two or three thousand people who do not want to be here are forced into the Czech Republic, it is fair to assume that they will leave anyway. The quotas are unfair to the refugees, we can't just move them here and there like a cattle. According to the Czech interior minister Milan Chivanek, from September 2, 2015, Czech Republic was offering asylum to every Syrian caught by the police notwithstanding the Dublin regulation, out of about 1,300 apprehended until 9 September, only 60 decided to apply for asylum in the Czech Republic, with the rest of them continuing to Germany or elsewhere. Czech President Milos Semon said that Ukrainian refugees fleeing war in Donbass should be also included in migrant quotas. In November 2015, the Czech Republic started a program of medical evacuations of selected Syrian refugees from Jordan, 400 in total. Under the program, severely sick children were selected for treatment in the best Czech medical facilities, with their families getting asylum, airlift and a paid flats in the Czech Republic after stating clear intent to stay in the country. However, from the initial three families that had been transported to Prague, one immediately fled to Germany. Czech Prime Minister Bohuslav Sobotka stated that this signals that quota system will not work either. On September 7, 2015, France announced that it would accept 24,000 asylum seekers over two years, Britain announced that it would take in up to 20,000 refugees, primarily vulnerable children and orphans from camps in Jordan, Lebanon and Turkey and Germany pledged 6.7 billion U.S. dollars to deal with the migrant crisis. However, also on September 7, 2015, both Austria and Germany warned that they would not be able to keep up with the current pace of the influx and that it would need to slow down first. On September 22, 2015, European Union Interior Ministers meeting in the Justice and Home Affairs Council approved a plan to relocate 120,000 asylum seekers over two years from the frontline states Italy. Greece and Hungary to all other EU countries, except Denmark, 
Ireland and the United Kingdom which have opt-outs. The relocation plan applies to asylum seekers in clear need of international protection, those with a recognition rate higher than 75%, i.e. Syrians, Eritreans and Iraqis, 15,600 from Italy, 50,400 from Greece and 54,000 from Hungary who will be distributed among EU states on the basis of quotas taking into account the size of economy and population of each state, as well as the average number of asylum applications. The decision was taken by a majority vote, with the Czech Republic, Hungary, Romania and Slovakia voting against and Finland abstaining. Since Hungary voted against the relocation plan, its 54,000 asylum seekers would not be relocated for now and could be relocated from Italy and Greece instead. Czech Interior Minister tweeted after the vote, Common sense lost today. Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico is threatening legal action over EU's mandatory migrant quotas at European Court of Justice in Luxembourg. On 9 October, the first 20 Eritrean asylum seekers were relocated by plane from Italy to Sweden, following the EU prerequisite fingerprinting in Italy as the first member country of asylum registration. On October 25, 2015, the leaders of Greece and other states along Western Balkan routes to wealthier nations of Europe, including Germany, agreed to set up holding camps for 100,000 asylum seekers, a move which German Chancellor Merkel supported. In the wake of November 2015 Paris attacks, Poland's European Affairs Minister designate Konrad Zemanski stated that he sees no possibility of enacting the EU refugee relocation scheme, saying, we'll accept, refugees only, if we have security guarantees. The attacks prompted European officials, particularly German officials, to reevaluate their stance on EU policy toward migrants, especially in light of the ongoing European migrant crisis. Many German officials believed a higher level of scrutiny was needed, and criticized the position of German Chancellor Angela Merkel, but the German Vice Chancellor Sigmar Gabriel defended her stance, and pointed out that a lot of migrants were fleeing terrorism. On 12 November it was reported that Frontex was maintaining combined asylum seeker and deportation hotspots in Lesbos. Greece since October. On December 15, 2015, the EU proposed taking over the border and coastal security operations at major migrant entry pressure points, via its Frontex operation. By September 2016 the quota system proposed by EU has been abandoned for the time being, after staunch resistance by Visegrad group countries. By June 9, 2017, 22,504 people have been resettled through the quota system with over 2,000 of them being resettled in May alone. All relevant countries participate in the relocation scheme with exception of Austria, Denmark, Czech Republic, Poland, and Hungary, against whom the European Commission has consequentially launched sanctions procedure only to the Czech Republic, Poland, and Hungary. EU Safe Countries of Origin List 12 EU countries have national lists of so-called safe countries of origin. The European Commission is proposing one, common EU list designating as safe all EU candidate countries, Albania, Macedonia, Montenegro, Serbia and Turkey, plus potential EU candidates Bosnia and Herzegovina and Kosovo. The list would allow for faster returns to those countries, even though asylum applications from nationals of those countries would continue to be assessed on an individual, case-by-case -case basis. Valletta Summit on Migration between 11 and November 12, 2015, a summit between European and African leaders was held in Valletta, Malta, to discuss the migrant crisis. The summit resulted in the EU setting up an emergency trust fund to promote development in Africa, in return for African countries to help out in the crisis. Negotiations with Turkey On November 12, 2015, at the end of the two-day summit in Malta, EU officials announced an agreement to offer Turkey 3 billion euros over two years to manage more than 2 million refugees from Syria who had sought refuge there, in return for curbing migration through Turkey into the EU. In November, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan reportedly threatened to send the millions of refugees in Turkey to EU member states if it was left to shoulder the burden alone. The 3 billion euros fund for Turkey was approved by the EU in February 2016. In January, the Netherlands proposed that the EU take in 250,000 refugees a year from Turkey in return for Turkey closing the Aegean Sea route to Greece, but Turkey rejected the plan. Starting on March 7, 2016, the EU met with Turkey for another summit in Brussels to negotiate further solutions of the crisis. 
an original plan saw for the closing statement to declare the Western Balkan route closed. However, this was met with criticism from German Chancellor Angela Merkel. The EU proposed to the Turkish government a plan in which Turkey would take back every refugee who entered Greece, and thereby the EU, illegally. In return, the EU would accept one person into the EU who is registered as a Syrian refugee in Turkey for every Syrian sent back from Greece. Turkey countered the offer by demanding a further 3 billion euros in order to help them in supplying the 2.7 million refugees in Turkey. In addition, the Turkish government asked for their citizens to be allowed to travel freely into the Schengen area starting at the end of June 2016, as well as an increased speed in talks of a possible accession of Turkey to the European Union. The plan to send migrants back to Turkey was criticized on March 8, 2016 by the United Nations, which warned that it could be illegal to send the migrants back to Turkey in exchange of financial and political rewards. <laughs> U. Turkey deal equals. On March 20, 2016, the agreement between the EU and Turkey to tackle the migrant crisis came into effect. As the deal outlines, migrants arriving in Greece will be sent back to Turkey if they do not apply for asylum or their claim is rejected. Under the deal the EU would send around 2,300 experts, including security and migration officials and translators to Greece who will help implement the deal. The deal further outlines the mechanism that any irregular migrants who will cross into Greece from Turkey after March 20, 2016 will be sent back to Turkey based on individual case-by-case -case evaluation. Any Syrian who is returned to Turkey will be replaced by a Syrian resettled from Turkey to the EU. EU, preferably the individuals who did not try to enter the EU illegally in the past and not exceeding a maximum of 72,000 people. Turkish nationals would have access to Schengen Passport Free Zone by June 2016 but this will not include non-Schengen countries such as Britain. The talks aiming at Turkey's accession to the EU as a member will start in July 2016 and a promised $3.3 billion aid will speedily be delivered to Turkey. Following the arrival of migrants from Greece to Turkey, they are given medical checks and are registered and fingerprinted, then bus to reception and removal centers in Ankara, Erzurum, Izmir, Gaziantep, Kayseri, Van, and Kirklareli, and later deported to their home countries. The UNHCR said it was not a party to the EU-Turkey deal and it would not be involved in returns or detention. Like the UNHCR, four aid agencies, Médecins Sans Frontières, the International Rescue Committee, the Norwegian Refugee Council and Save the Children, said they would not help implementing the EU-Turkey deal because blanket expulsion of refugees contravened international law. Amnesty International said that the agreement between EU and Turkey was madness, and that the day, March 18, 2016, was a dark day for refugee convention, Europe and humanity. By contrast, Turkish Prime Minister Ahmet Davutoglu described the day as a historic day, adding that Turkey and EU had the same challenges the same future and the same destiny. Donald Tusk said that the migrants in Greece would not be sent back to dangerous areas. Following Turkish EU tensions, Turkey warned about cancelling the deal. In April 2016, Turkish President Erdogan threatened to allow the EU-Turkey deal to collapse. Erdogan said, We have received lots of thanks for our action on the refugees and in the fight against terrorism. But we are not doing this for thanks. The UNHCR's director Vincent Cocatel claimed in August 2016 that parts of the EU-Turkey deal about immigration were already de facto suspended due to the post-coup absence of Turkish police at the Greek detention centers, as there were no officers to oversee deportations. On March 17, 2017, Turkish Interior Minister Suleyman Soylu threatened to send 15,000 refugees to the European Union every month while Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut Çavuşoğlu has also threatened to cancel the March 2016 EU-Turkey migrant deal. Effects on Dublin and Schengen Rules Under the Dublin Regulation, an asylum seeker has to apply for asylum in the first EU country they entered, and, if they cross borders to another country after being fingerprinted, they can be returned to the former. As most asylum seekers try to reach Germany or Sweden through the other EU countries in order to apply for asylum there, and as 22 EU countries form the borderless Schengen area where internal border controls are abolished, enforcement of the Dublin regulation became increasingly difficult during late summer 2015, with some countries allowing asylum seekers to transit through their territories and other countries renouncing the right to return them back or reinstating border controls within the Schengen area to prevent them from entering. Hungary became overburdened by asylum applications and on June 23, 2015 it stopped receiving back its applicants who later crossed the borders to other EU countries and were detained there.
On August 24, 2015, according to Article 17 of the Dublin III regulations Germany decided to suspend the general procedure as regards Syrian refugees and to process their asylum applications directly itself. The change in Germany asylum policy incited large numbers of migrants to move towards Germany, especially after German Chancellor Merkel stated that there is no legal limit to refugee numbers. Austria was meanwhile allowing unimpeded travel of migrants from Hungary to Germany through its own territory. On September 2, 2015, the Czech Republic also decided to defy the Dublin regulation and to offer Syrian refugees who have already applied for asylum in other EU countries and who reach the country to either have their application processed in the Czech Republic or to continue their journey elsewhere. The rules regarding immigrants of other nationalities were not changed, i.e., they would still face detention and return under the Dublin regulation if trying to reach Germany through the Czech Republic, unless they had the right to apply for asylum in the Czech Republic. On 7 September, Austria announced it would phase out special measures that have allowed tens of thousands of migrants to cross its territory and will reinstate the Dublin regulation. Between 9 and 10 September, Denmark closed rail lines with Germany after hundreds of migrants refused to be registered in the country as asylum seekers and insisted on continuing their travel to Sweden. On 13 September, Germany established temporary border controls along its border with Austria, in order to limit the current inflows and return to orderly procedures when people enter the country according to German Interior Minister Thomas de Maizière. The Czech Republic reacted by increasing police presence along its border with Austria in order to be able to react if the mass of migrants that was in Austria tried to reach Germany through the Czech Republic. Czech police did not establish actual border control like Germany, but conducted random searches of vehicles and trains within the Czech territory not far from the border, with cars and helicopters patrolling also alongside the green border. Some Czech police officers were stationed also within Austria in order to give advance warning in case large numbers of migrants move towards the Austrian-Czech borders. On 14 September, Austria established border controls alongside its border with Hungary. Austria deployed not only police officers, but also the army along its border. Hungary also deployed army personnel along its border with Serbia and announced that from 15 September, all people who illegally enter the Hungarian territory of Schengen area will be arrested and face from three to five years imprisonment. Following Austrian Chancellor Werner Feynman's remarks that Hungary's treatment of refugees is akin to Nazi policies, Hungary started transporting refugees by buses directly to the borderline with Austria, where they were offloaded and were then trying to cross to Austria on foot. On 15 September it was reported that migrants in southern Hungary have started a hunger strike protesting the closure of the green border with Serbia. On 16 September it was reported that Hungarian police had used tear gas and a water cannon on protesting migrants demanding the opening of the green border, after they had thrown stones and concrete at the riot police. On 17 September, Croatia closed its border with Serbia. In July 2017, the European Court of Justice upheld the Dublin regulation declaring it still stands despite the high influx of 2015, giving EU member states the right to deport migrants to the first country of entry to the EU. EU member states Austria, on August 6, 2015 Amnesty International Secretary General Heinz Patzelt inspected the refugee camp Bunspedrung Stell and Trace Kirchen where more than 4,800 migrants slash refugees are housed. Medical expert Sarus Murze from Amnesty International noted that the people had to wait for days in order to get medical help, this due to the vast number of people received over a short period of time. The report also stated that four doctors were present at the refugee camp and that showers and some hygienic facilities were in disrepair. Patzelt claimed, Austria is currently violating human rights and should focus on unattended children and minors. Bulgaria Bulgaria built a fence along its border with Turkey to prevent migrants from crossing through its territory in order to reach other EU countries. The fence is equipped with infrared cameras, motion sensors and wire, and is monitored by the army. Croatia Croatia will receive 1,064 migrants in the next two years from 2015 according to the EU plan. Croatia was originally supposed to receive 505 migrants, but decided to accept more, which makes it the only country in the EU, along with Estonia, 
which has done so. On August 29, 2015 a Croatian daily newspaper Judanji List published an interview with a senior government official who said that the Croatian government formed an interdepartmental working group that is working on a plan on how to accept these migrants. Croatia will in October 2015 send its delegation to the migrants camps in Italy and Greece which will choose immigrants from Syria and Eritrea that Croatia will accept. Criteria for the selection will be, 1. Any kind of connection to Croatia, such as family in Croatia or a diploma from one of the Croatian universities. While Croatia was member of Yugoslavia, many foreigners from non-aligned movement countries, especially Syrians, were coming to Croatia to study. 2. Education in occupations that are in demand in Croatia. And 3. Families with small children. In addition, Croatia shares a land border with Serbia. Therefore, there is a risk of a strong inflow of migrants from Serbia considering that Hungary erected a fence on its border with Serbia. Nearly 80% of the border consists of the Danube River, but the problem is the 70 kilometers long so-called green border near Tavarnik. According to the Croatian Minister of Interior Ranko Osta each police in the area has enough people and equipment to protect Croatian border against illegal immigrants. Croatian President Kalinda Grabar Kjovic and First Deputy Prime Minister Vesna Pusic rejected the option of building a fence on Croatian border with Serbia. Grabar Kjovic has accused German Chancellor Angela Merkel of causing chaos. In expectancy of possible new migrant wave that might activate in winter of 2016, 16, President Grobar Kjovic stated on September 21, 2016 before the UN General Assembly that if a new migrant wave reaches Croatian borders, Croatia would not let migrants pass through its territory because Croatia needed to protect its territory, adding that it turned out that over 85% of them were economic migrants and not genuine refugees. Czech Republic Czech Republic will receive 4,306 refugees according to quotas accepted by the European Commission. Prime Minister Bohuslav Sobotka said the European Commission had failed in solving the crisis and expressed disagreement with proposed quotas saying, we reject the system of quotas. I do not consider it effective, I do not think it would help bring any solution. It makes no sense to discuss any numbers for now. He said Europe needs to complete what the European Council has agreed in the past and not to create new plans and proposals. He supports the idea of creating hotspots in Italy or Greece. Czech President Milo Semon has expressed his dissatisfaction with the mass inflow of migrants to Europe on several occasions. In late August 2015 in an interview for Radio Frequence 1 he said, The reception of migrants from the Middle East and Northern Africa to the territory of Czech Republic brings with it three major risks, spread of infectious diseases, terrorism of the Islamic State and the creation of new ghettos. According to his opinion the majority of refugees are actually economic migrants that are not fleeing war. The president also thinks that migrants that are crossing Czech territory in order to go to Germany will stay in Czech Republic when Germany eventually stops accepting them, which would then make Czech Republic to defend its boundaries with the police and army. Czech Deputy Prime Minister Andrei Babish called for NATO intervention against human trafficking in the Mediterranean. After talks with NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg on migrant crisis issue Babish said, NATO is not interested in refugees, though Turkey, a NATO member, is their entrance gate to Europe and smugglers operate on Turkish territory. Opposition top 09's Miroslav Kalausk said that confident and wealthy countries such as the Czech Republic should not be afraid to accept 3,000 refugees and accuse President Semon of giving rise to hatred to refugees, however he also shares disagreement with proposed quotas. Former Minister of Foreign Affairs Karl Schwarzenberg has said that accepting 80,000 refugees would be suitable. Minister of Human Rights and Equal Opportunities Jiri Dienstbeier said the country is able to accept 7,000-15,000 refugees now and should express solidarity and help other countries facing the strongest influx of refugees without quotas. Denmark Denmark temporarily closed rail links with Germany in September to stop migrants from illegally entering the country, and the E45 motorway due to migrants on the road. Denmark used the second highest amount on asylum seekers among European nations in 2015, compared to GDP, 0.47% of GDP, after Sweden at half a percent, followed by Germany and Italy at 0.2%, with remaining lower. This is expected to rise in 2016. In December 2015, the Danish government announced that it would introduce new laws that will allow confiscation of cash above 3,000 Danish kroner circa 402 euros, and valuables worth more than 3,000 Danish kroner from asylum seekers to pay the cost of their stay. Items of sentimental value, such as wedding rings, 
personal mobile phones and personal laptops, would not be taken. In January 2016, the limit was changed to 10,000 Danish kroner, circa 1,340 euros, and the law was passed. Similar laws already exist in Switzerland, limit 1,000 Swiss francs, circa 913 euros, the Netherlands, limit 5,895 euros, and some federal states of Germany, limit varies, 750 euros in Bavaria and 350 euros in Baden-Württemberg. The Danish law was condemned from several sides, including by the UNHCR, and caused one Danish politician, Jens Rode, to defect from the Venster Party to the Social Liberal Party. The Danish police said that this would be unenforceable and a review two months after the law came into effect showed that there had been no confiscations. Finland, many migrants arrived over the land border from Sweden. They were stopped from using ferries by carriers' responsibility rules. On 14th of September, a former Prime Minister Madi von Hanen noted that the government needed to regain control on who enters the country and to divert asylum seekers to special camps. He did not think that it would be appropriate that the asylum seekers could continue to freely move around. Later on the same day, the Minister of the Interior Petteri Orpo, who is also a member of the National Coalition Party, noted that tightened border controls would be imposed on the northern border stations by the end of the week. On November 14, 2015 Finnish Prime Minister Juha Sipila noted that border controls need to be tightened and he expressed his concern that Schengen agreement and freedom of movement was not working. He stressed, that border controls will be restored if Schengen agreement is not fixed. Furthermore, he noted, that Finnish National Bureau of Investigation will improve its cyber surveillance. On the same day Finnish President Sauli Niinisto, elected from the National Coalition Party, was referred to have noted that national solutions needed to be formed if the Schengen Agreement could not be repaired. France, on September 23, 2015, after the Czech Republic, Hungary, Romania and Slovakia voted against a plan to relocate asylum seekers arriving in Greece, Italy and Hungary among other member states. French President François Hollande warned the four former Eastern Bloc countries against rejecting the EU mandatory migrant quotas, those who don't share our values, those who don't even want to respect those principles, need to start asking themselves questions about their place in the European Union. Germany, junior coalition partner, Vice-Chancellor Sigmar Gabriel said that Germany could take in 500,000 refugees annually for the next several years. German opposition to the government's admission of the new wave of migrants has been an increasingly tense political debate, coupled with a rise in anti-immigration protests. Pejida, an anti-immigration movement flourished briefly in late 2014, followed by a new wave of anti-immigration protests in the late summer of 2015. Chancellor Angela Merkel insisted that Germany has the economic strength to cope with the influx of migrants and reiterated that there is no legal maximum limit on the number of migrants Germany can take. In September 2015, enthusiastic crowds across the country welcomed arriving refugees and migrants. Horst Seehofer, leader of Christian Social Union in Bavaria, the sister party of Merkel's Christian Democratic Union attacked Merkel's policies in sharp language, threatened to sue the government in the high court, and hinted that the CSU might topple Merkel. Many MPs of Merkel's CDU party also voiced dissatisfaction with Merkel. Meanwhile, Yasmin Fahimi, Secretary General of the Social Democratic Party, the junior partner of the ruling coalition, praised Merkel's policy allowing migrants in Hungary to enter Germany as a strong signal of humanity to show that Europe's values are valid also in difficult times. North Rhine-Westphalia, Germany's most populous state, was hiring more than 3,600 new teachers to manage the influx of an estimated 40,000 new refugee children in 2015. CSU leader and Bavarian state premier Horst Seehofer criticized Merkel's decision to allow in migrants, we are now in a state of mind without rules, without system and without order because of a German decision. The German Interior Ministry estimates as many as 30% of asylum seekers arriving in Germany claiming to be from Syria are in fact from other countries, and suggested to reduce EU funding for member countries that reject mandatory refugee quotas. In November 2015, there were talks inside the governing coalition to stop family unification for migrants for two years, and to establish transit zones on the border end, for migrants with low chances to get asylum approved, to be housed there until their application is approved. The issues are in conflict between the CSU who favors those new measures and threaten to leave the coalition without them, and the SPD who opposes them. Merkel has agreed to the measures. 
The November 2015 Paris attacks prompted re-evaluation of German officials' stance on the EU's policy toward migrants. There appeared to be a consensus among officials, with the notable exception of Angela Merkel herself, that a higher level of scrutiny was needed in vetting migrants with respect to their mission in Germany. However, while not officially limiting the influx numerically, Merkel has tightened asylum policy in Germany. Hungary Hungary has finished construction of the first phase of a fence on its southern border with Serbia in late August 2015, according to the Hungarian Ministry of Defense. The fence consists of three strands of NATO razor wire, and is 175 kilometers long. The next phase involves construction of a wire fence which will be approximately 4 meters high. In August, Describing Hungary as, under siege from human traffickers, Minister of the Prime Minister's Office Janos Lazar announced that the government would defend this stretch of our borders with force, deploying 9,000 police to keep undocumented migrants out. Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban wrote in the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, Europe's response is madness. We must acknowledge that the European Union's misguided immigration policy is responsible for this situation. Orban also demanded an official EU list of safe countries to which migrants can be returned. He said that the moral, human thing is to make clear, please don't come. Why do you have to go from Turkey to Europe? Turkey is a safe country. Stay there. It's risky to come. Hungary has adopted a list of countries deemed safe for transiting purposes. If an asylum seeker has passed through those countries, it is assumed that he could have found asylum there, and therefore he is not eligible for asylum in Hungary. Speaking at United Nations General Assembly, Prime Minister Viktor Orban called for global quota system to distribute refugees to all countries. Italy, some Italian towns and cities have refused instructions from the national government to house migrants. The Mafia Capitale investigation revealed that the Italian Mafia profits from the migrant crisis and exploits refugees. Pope Francis thanked the Italian Navy for migrant rescue effort. The murder of Ashley Ann Olsen in her Italian apartment by an illegal immigrant from Senegal rapidly acquired political significance in the context of the European migrant crisis. The police chief of Florence addressed safety worries, assuring the public that Florence remains safe in the wake of the Olsen murder. Latvia, Latvia decided to receive 250 migrants in the next two years according to the EU plan. National Alliance Party expressed its disapproval of such decision. On August 4, 2015 around 250 activists gathered in Riga on a protest against government's decision on receiving migrants. Lithuania Lithuania decided to receive 325 migrants, although after the increase of migrant flow in August 2015, its government did not discount the possibility of accepting a greater number of migrants later in the same year. Malta Prime Minister Joseph Muscat called the crisis an ugly period for Europe and said that Malta will take in 75 migrants from Italy and Greece. He also called for a global system of refugee quotas. Poland, in 2015, just before the parliamentary elections that were to happen that year, government officials with then Prime Minister Ewa Kopacz stated that the country was ready to take 2,000 refugees. However, after the Law and Justice Party won the elections, the rhetoric was changed. Both the government of Poland and President Andrzej Duda rejected the European Union's proposal of compulsory migrant quotas, the latter stating, I won't agree to a dictate of the strong. I won't back a Europe where the economic advantage of the size of a population will be a reason to force solutions on other countries regardless of their national interests. Portugal, in the next two years, Portugal is willing to offer shelter to 1,500 of the refugees flooding into Europe from the Mediterranean Sea. A source has told GRU de Noticias that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has already presented its counter-proposal to the European Commission, EC which wanted Portugal to absorb 2,400 refugees. Romania, the European Commission asked Romania to accept 6,351 refugees under an EU quota scheme. The year active reported that Romanian Prime Minister Victor Ponta said that his country will request admission to the EU's Schengen borderless area if mandatory quotas to accept refugees are decided by the Union. Slovakia Government of Slovakia stated that it would help with migration into Europe by receiving 200 migrants according to the EU plan, but on condition that the migrants are Christians. Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico said, I have only one question, who bombed Libya? Who caused problems in North Africa? Slovakia? No. 
The Prime Minister proposed temporary refuge in his country for 500 migrants who have submitted requests for asylum in Austria, whose accommodation for refugees is overfilled, but as for 200 migrants that Slovakia will receive according to the EU plan, requires that these 500 are Christians as well. On September 15, 2015, FICO was reported saying that all crossing the border illegally would be detained. FICO rejected European Commission plan to distribute migrants among EU member states, saying, as long as I am Prime Minister, mandatory quotas will not be implemented on Slovak territory. s and group leader has proposed to suspend FICO's Smer party from the Party of European Socialists, PES. Sweden, as of 26 November, Sweden had received 146,000 asylum seekers in 2015 with a record of 39,000 applications in October. Most asylum seekers were Afghan, followed by Syrians and Iraqis. In the beginning of November, the authorities warned they could no longer offer housing to all asylum seekers and on 12 November temporary border control was enacted, on the Swedish side, which reduced the number of migrants somewhat, migrants could still apply for asylum. On November 26, 2015, Prime Minister Stefan Löfven said the system for welcoming migrants was about to collapse and that the cabinet would propose major new restrictions and measures to reduce the inflow of migrants. He called on other European countries to take more responsibility. The government in December decided to introduce carriers' responsibility for trains and buses on the Øresund Bridge which would introduce Swedish de facto border controls on the Danish side. In 2016, there were reports that multiple sexual harassment incidents had been reported at the We Are Stockholm Festival over the course of several years. United Kingdom, British Home Secretary Theresa May said that it was important to help people living in war zone regions and refugee camps, not the ones who are strong and rich enough to come to Europe. British UKIP politician Nigel Farage stated that the exodus from Libya had been caused by NATO military intervention, approved by David Cameron and Nicolas Sarkozy, in the civil war in Libya. International The United Nations predicted that 1 million migrants should reach Europe by 2016 and warned on September 25, 2015 that worsening conditions in Iraq would produce many more migrants. In September 2015, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg identified a need for immediate measures, border, migrant, the discussion about quotas, so on, this is civilian issues, addressed by the European Union. Czech Deputy Prime Minister Andre Babish said in reaction, according to the NATO chief, the problem of refugees is a problem of the EU and the border protection and the fight against people smugglers is in the power of particular EU member states. The Russian Federation released an official statement on September 2, 2015 that the United Nations Security Council was working on a draft resolution to address the European migrant crisis, likely by permitting the inspection of suspected migrant ships. The International Organization for Migration claimed that deaths at sea increased ninefold after the end of Operation Mare Nostrum. Amnesty International condemned European governments for negligence towards the humanitarian crisis in the Mediterranean which they say led to an increase in deaths at sea. In April 2015, Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch criticized the funding of search and rescue operations. Amnesty International said that the EU was turning its back on its responsibilities and clearly threatening thousands of lives. Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott said the tragedies were worsened by Europe's refusal to learn from its own mistakes and from the efforts of others who have handled similar problems. Destroying the criminal people smugglers was the center of gravity of our border control policies, and judicious boat turnbacks was the key. In July 2013, Pope Francis visited the island of Lampedusa on his first official visit outside of Rome. He prayed for migrants, living and dead and denounced their traffickers. He expressed his concern about the loss of life and urged EU leaders to act decisively and quickly to stop these tragedies from recurring. Lebanon's Education Minister Elias Boussab told British Prime Minister David Cameron that as many as 2% of the refugees could be jihadis belonging to ISIS. Former U.S. President Barack Obama praised Germany for taking a leading role in accepting refugees. During his April 2016 visit to Germany, Obama praised German Chancellor Angela Merkel for being on the right side of history with her open border immigration policy. In a report released in January 2016, Médecins Sans Frontières denounced the EU response to the refugee crisis in 2015 saying that policies of deterrence and a chaotic response to the humanitarian needs of those who fled actively worsened the conditions of refugees and migrants and created a policy-made humanitarian crisis. 
According to MSF, obstacles placed by EU governments included not providing any alternative to a deadly sea crossing, erecting razor wire fences, continuously changing administrative and registration procedures, committing acts of violence at sea and at land borders and providing completely inadequate reception conditions in Italy and Greece. In March 2016, NATO General Philip Breedlove stated, Together, Russia and the Assad regime are deliberately weaponizing migration in an attempt to overwhelm European structures and break European resolve, these indiscriminate weapons used by both Bashar al-Assad, and the non-precision use of weapons by the Russian forces, I can't find any other reason for them other than to cause refugees to be on the move and make them someone else's problem. He also claimed that criminals, extremists and fighters were hiding in the flow of migrants. Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev said, It's quite simply stupid to open Europe's doors wide and invite in everyone who wants to come to your country. European migration policy is a total failure, all that is absolutely frightening. In June 2016, exiled Cuban journalist Carlos Alberto Montaner suggested that France could establish a refugee state in French Guiana. On June 18, 2016, United Nations Chief Ban Ki-moon praised Greece for showing remarkable solidarity and compassion towards refugees and he also called for international support. The lack of action of UNESCO in this area, until now, is subject of a controversy. Some scholars, as Antonio Silva, blame this UN institution not to denounce racism against war refugees in Europe with the same vigor as the vandalism against ancient monuments perpetrated by fundamentalists in the Middle East. They also accuse the organization to contribute to the emerging process of fetishization of the cultural heritage, forgetting that it should be used primarily as an instrument in the fight against racism, as openly declared the authors of the Constitutive Charter of the Institution in 1945. In November 2016, the Euro-Mediterranean Human Rights Monitor issued a report regarding the humanitarian situation of migrants into Greece. It hosts 16.209 migrants on its island and 33.650 migrants on the mainland, most of whom are women and children. Because of lack of water, medical care and security protection witnessed by the Euromed Monitor team especially with the arrival of winter, they are at risk of serious deterioration in health, mostly children and pregnant women. 1,500 refugees were, accordingly, moved into other places since their camps were deluged with snow but relocation of the refugees always came too late after they lived without electricity and heating devices for too long. It also showed that there is a lack of access to legal services and security protection to the refugees and migrants in the camps, there is no trust between the resident and the protection offices, paving a path for some people to report crimes and illegal acts in the camps. In addition, the migrants are subject to regular xenophobic attacks, fascist violence, forced strip searches at the hands of residents and police and detention. The women living in the Athens settlements in the Basilica, Softex and Diavada camps feel worried about their children as they may be subjected to sexual abuse, trafficking and drug use. As a result, some of the refugees and migrants commit suicide, burn property and protest. Finally, it clarified the difficulties the refugees face when entering into Greece. More than 16,000 people are trapped while waiting for deportation on the Greek islands of Lesbos, Chios, Samos, Leros, and Kos, and the number of residents is double the capacity of the five islands. Libya According to Reuters, most migrants setting sail from Libya did so in vessels operated by people smugglers. In August 2017 the Libyan Coast Guard issued a declaration that NGO search and rescue vessels must stay outside a zone running 360 kilometers, 190 nautical miles, from the Libyan coast unless given express permission to enter. This zone is 10 nautical miles less than the Libyan exclusive economic zone. The Coast Guard statement criticized the NGO vessels from approaching the Libyan coastline to a distance of as little as 10 to 13 nautical miles, which is inside the Libyan territorial waters. As a result, NGOs MSF, Save the Children and CI suspended their operations after clashes where the Libyan Coast Guard asserted its sovereignty of its waters by firing warning shots.